Steve needs the following goods: some notebooks, a good pen, a cricket bat, and a pair of shoes. How can he get them? Steve pays the required amount of money in the shop and in return he gets these goods. Steve's father requires the following services: a person to repair the water heater, a maid to clean the house, a doctor as Steve's grandmother is not well and a carpenter to fix the wardrobe. How does he avail these services? He avails these services by paying money to the concerned service person. What is the common material that they use to avail the goods and services? Both of them had to pay some amount of money to avail the goods and services. Money is defined as the medium of exchange for goods and services. In modern days, various countries use their respective currencies as the medium for exchanging goods and services. I will give you shoes if you give me a bag of wheat. Yes, give me two pair of shoes. I will give you one bag of wheat. What do you see in the incident? Earlier, people used to exchange goods for goods. This system is known as barter system. In this system, the person selling wheat not only wants to sell wheat but also want to buy some pair of shoes in exchange and vice versa. Both the parties have to agree to sell and buy each other's commodities. This is known as double coincidence of wants. Now, let us look at these situations. I will give you shoes for your wheat. I do not need shoes. I need clothes. I need shoes, but I do not have wheat. What problem do you see here? In this situation, double coincidence of wants does not exist. Give me two bags of wheat for two pairs of shoes. No, I will give you only one bag of wheat for two pairs of shoes. In some situations, it is difficult to measure the value for two different goods. How do we solve these problems? Money as the medium of exchange can solve these problems. Money can be used as crucial intermediate item to eliminate the need for double coincidence of wants and determining the value of various goods. It is no longer necessary for the shoe manufacturer to look a farmer who will buy his shoes and at the same time sell him wheat. Once the shoe manufacturer exchanges his shoes for money, he can purchase wheat or any commodity that he wants. Since money acts as an intermediate in the exchange process, it is known as medium of exchange. Before the introduction of present coins and currencies, some other objects were used as money. In very early age, people used grains and cattle as money for exchanging goods. Thereafter, the uses of metallic coins like gold, silver, copper coins are in use till the last century. The modern form of currency used in India is rupee. Why is it accepted as the medium of exchange? As use of this currency is authorized by the government of our country, rupee is used as a medium of exchange in our country. Let us see how these currencies are made and circulated. The Reserve Bank of India issues the currency notes and coins on behalf of the central government. Currencies are used to the banks and ATMs from the Reserve Bank. Consumer uses them for many years. Currencies become soiled after years of use and get soiled. Soiled notes go back to the Reserve Bank again where they are destructed and issue new currencies again. Law legalizes the use of rupee as a medium of payment that cannot be refused in any transaction in India. Hence, rupee is widely accepted as a medium of exchange. Raju has got his salary today. He needs only some amount of money for his day-to-day -day expenditure. How do you think Raju can use his extra money? Raju can save his money by opening a bank account. 
Do you know the procedures involved in opening a bank account? Let us see how Raju opened his bank account. I want to open an account in your bank. Fill this form and give the documents. What documents do I need to submit? Give me your passport size photograph, your address proof, your identity proof, a reference letter from a person having account in this bank. Take my form and other documents. Here is your passbook and the checkbook. You will be getting your debit card very soon by post. You have to fill one more form if you need internet banking. Raju has a bank account now in his name and deposits his extra amount. Bank accepts the deposit and pays an amount of interest on the deposits. He can withdraw his money from the bank based on his needs. Since the deposits with the bank account can be withdrawn on demand, these deposits are also called as demand deposits. What benefits does Raju get from his demand deposit? He earns an amount as interest. His money is safe from theft. What facilities can Raju avail through his bank account? He will get a passbook where all transactions are recorded. If he opts for a debit card, then he can use his debit card as in when he needs to withdraw some money from ATM or purchase something from a big shop where swapping machine is available. If Raju is eligible for credit card and if he opts for it, then he can use it as in when required. He even opts for a checkbook so that he can make payment through check instead of cash. A chuck is a paper instructing the bank to pay specific amount from the person's account to the person in whose name the check has been issued. The garment manufacturer Mr. R. Chauhan had to make a payment to the textile supplier Ravi Kumar. Mr. Chauhan writes a check for Rs. 50,000. The amount is transferred from Mr. Chauhan's account to Ravi Kumar's account in a couple of days. The transaction is completed without any payment of cash. This is the check issued to Ravi Kumar by Mr. Chauhan. Let us have a close look at it. What segments do you see in the check? A check consists of various segments. Name of the person to whom payment is made. The amount in letters and numbers. The account number who makes the payment. The branch code of the bank. The check number, various coding used by the banks. Signature of the account bearer who makes the payment. The date should be mentioned. The facility of checks against demand deposits makes it possible to directly settle payment without the use of cash. Demand deposits are accepted widely as a means of payment along with currency. They constitute a huge amount of money in modern economy. It is a safe mode for transaction of a huge amount because no one else can get the amount rather the check bearer on whose name the check has been issued. Bank plays an important role in this transaction procedure. But bank cannot make any payment by check against the demand deposit. Bank always makes the payment by cash. To buy a house when you do not have the required deposit in your account? Ramesh deposits his savings in the bank account. He gets some interest on his deposits. He also withdraws money as and when required. Now he has planned to buy a car but he does not have the required amount to buy a good one. He requests the same bank to give the remaining amount which is payable at monthly installment. On receiving this amount, he has to pay about 8.5% yearly interest to the bank. Who is acting as a mediator for all these activities? Bank is a mediator between two kinds of activities, deposits and borrowing. Ramesh gets the required amount of money from the bank to buy a new car. He gets an amount with an agreement to repay some of it on monthly basis. How did Ramesh get the required money to buy his car? 
he got the required amount through a loan. Credit or loan refers to an agreement in which the lender supplies the borrower with money, goods or services in return for the promise of future payment. Can you identify some transaction in our day-to-day -day activities that involve credit in some form or the other? The maid in your house has taken rupees 5000 in advance and promised to work for another 5 more months. Rohan's brother has borrowed rupees 2 lakhs from a bank for his studies and promised to pay after 5 years. How do the banks get money to offer loans? Banks receive lots of money from the depositors and offers them at a rate of interest. Banks keep only a small proportion of their deposit as cash with themselves at a particular time. Usually, banks in India holds about 15% of their deposits as cash. This is kept for paying the depositors who might come to withdraw money from bank any time. Since only some of many depositors come to withdraw cash from the bank, they are able to manage with this 15%. Banks use the major portion of the deposits to extend loans. There is a huge demand for loans for various economic activities which is fulfilled by the bank loans. Banks charge a much higher interest on loans than they offer on deposits. The difference between the interest they offer to the depositors and what they charge from the borrower is their main source of income. This is the interesting mechanism through which bank mediates between the depositor who have surplus fund and the borrowers who are in need of these fund. The garment manufacturing company of Mr. Chauhan gets an order for 2000 shirts and 1000 pants from a big trader which is to be delivered in a month for Dashera and Diwali. To complete the production on time, Mr. Chauhan has to hire some more people and purchase some new stitching machines, but he is not having the required amount to do so. How do you think he gets the required money? To meet these expenses, he has to loan from two sources. One, he asked the textile supplier to supply clothes now and promises to pay later. Secondly, he borrows some money from the trader as advance payment for 1000 shirts with the promise to deliver the order by the end of this month. He purchased the extra stitching machines and hired more people to work. At the end of the month, Mr. Chauhan is able to deliver the orders on time, makes good profit and repays the amount he had borrowed. The credit helped Mr. Chauhan to meet the ongoing expenses for production, complete production on time and make profit and thereby increase his earnings. Thus, credit plays a vital and positive role in generating income. Savitri, a poor farmer, grows potatoes in her two acres of land. She takes a loan from the money lender to meet the expenses of the cultivation with a rate of 25% interest per year. Midway through the season, the crop is hit by pest and crop fails. Though she sprays her crop with expensive pesticide, does not help her to get good harvest. She is unable to repay the money lender. Debt increases a large amount over the year. Next year again, Savitri takes a fresh loan. Though she gets normal harvest this year, she is unable to cover the old loan. The money lender harasses her for payment. At last, she has to sell one acre of land to pay off the debt. What do you see in this example? Sometimes, failures of the crop makes loan repayment impossible for the farmer. Hence, farmer has to sell a part of the land to repay the money. Credit here, instead of helping the borrower, left worse off. Credit sometimes pushes the borrower into a situation from which recovery is very painful. This situation is commonly known as debt trap. Aditi has taken a loan of Rs 25 lakhs from the bank to purchase a house. The annual interest rate on the loan is 10.5% and the loan is to be repaid in 10 years in monthly installments. Every loan agreement specifies an interest rate which the borrower must pay to the lender along with the repayment of the principal. Aditi had to show her employment records and salary records to get the loan. 
the bank retained the papers of the new house which will be returned to Aditi only when she repays the entire loan with the interest. Why did bank retain the papers of her new house? Bank retained her papers as security for the loan. Lander may demand something as security against the loan which is known as collateral. Collateral is an asset that the borrower owns such as land, building, vehicle, livestock, deposits with the bank etc. and uses this as guarantee to a lender until the loan is repaid. If the borrower fails to repay the loan, the lender has the right to sell the asset or collateral to obtain the payment. Have a close look at Aditi's loan details. The interest rate, collateral, documentation requirement and the mode of repayment together are known as the terms of credit. The terms of credit vary substantially from one credit arrangement to another depending on the nature of the lender and the borrower. Every year, Sham has to take a loan for the cultivation on his 1.5 acres of land. Since last year, he has been borrowing money from an agricultural trader at an interest rate of 3% per month. The trader supplies the farm input on credit at the beginning of the credit season which is to be repaid when crops are ready to harvest. Besides the interest, Sham also had to promise to sell the crops to the trader. This way, the trader can ensure that money is repaid promptly. Since the crop prices are low after the harvest, the trader can make a profit from buying the crop at low price and selling it later when the price is high. Can you identify the terms of credit for Sham? Sham has to pay an interest of 36% per year, promise to sell the crops to the trader as collateral and repays the credit by selling the crop to the trader after harvest. Arun has 7 acres of land where he grows multiple crops in various seasons. He is one of the few people in the village who receive bank loan for cultivation. The interest rate on the loan is 8.5% per annum and can be repaid any time in the next 3 years. He has to show his land papers to get the loan. Arun repays the loan by selling a part of the crop after harvest and intends to store rest of the crop in a cold storage and again applies for a fresh loan against the cold storage. The bank offers these facilities to the farmers who have already taken crop loan from them. Arun is eligible for the facility and gets the loan for the cold storage. Arun repays both the loan on time and earns good profit as he is able to sell the crops when the price is high. Geeta works as an agricultural labor. She does not have any land. She works for a medium land owner in the village. But Several months of the year, Geeta does not have any work and she needs to depend on credit from her landowner to meet the daily expenses. Last month, Geeta's father-in-law fell sick and she had to take extra credit. The landowner charges an interest rate of 5% per month. Geeta repays the money by working for the landowner. But most of the time, she has to take a fresh loan before the previous loan has to be repaid. Presently, she owes the landowner rupees 5000. Though the landowner does not treat her well, she continues to work for him as she has taken loan from him and it should be repaid. Have a look at the table and let us compare the terms of credit for various categories of farmer in our country. Is there any way to help these small farmers and landless laborers? Cooperative societies are another major source of cheap credit in rural areas. The cooperative societies accept some deposits from its members. With these deposits as collateral, the cooperative society obtains large loan from the banks. These funds are used to provide loans to the members. Once these loans are repaid, another round of lending can take place. Farmers' cooperative or Krishak cooperatives provide loan for the purchase of agricultural implement, cultivation and agricultural trade, fishery, construction of houses, etc. Several other types of cooperatives are also possible such as weavers' cooperatives, industrial workers' cooperatives, etc.